In this video, we're going to walk through how to balance a chemical equation. Uh, so a few things to keep in mind when we work on this is to make sure you're starting your um, balancing with the correct formulas for all of your compounds. Without this, it's going to be impossible to actually get to a reasonable answer. It's important to also note that our subscripts can never be changed in our chemical equation. So if we have something like C2H6, then this 2 and 6 are giving us information about the ratio of atoms in our molecule. So if we change that, we are changing the molecule that we're talking about. And um, the chemical reaction that we're looking at won't apply to something different than the one already indicated. So these subscripts can't be changed no matter what. Um, we also can't change the chemical formula, as in if I wanted to increase the number of hydrogens but not carbons, it wouldn't be possible. I can't add a coefficient like three in front of the hydrogen in the middle of the chemical reaction, uh, the chemical formula. Um, any changes we make are going to be to the number of actual whole molecules we have, and we can change it with a coefficient in front of it. So I can have 18 hydrogen, but to do so, I will also have six carbon. We're going to balance equations one coefficient um, at a time, uh, or one element at a time. I highly recommend focusing in on one element um, rather than trying to look at this all as one piece at the same time. Um, it's easy to really get lost when trying to look at the problem as one large problem um, rather than break it up into much smaller problems. We're also going to make sure at the end that we have the smallest set of whole numbers that can be used. So if we had coefficients of um, let's say 2, 2, and 2 for something, then we would divide everything by two, so that way it would show the smallest ratio, which is one to one to one. So let's walk through an example to show what I mean. Um, so when I originally get a chemical reaction that's unbalanced, I have my reactants, and my products. And I'm going to just look at my elements one at a time. Rather than tallying everything up and trying to have a big picture of the number of potassium, chlorine, and oxygen I have, I'm just going to look first at my potassium, and then I'm going to look at my chlorine, and lastly I'll look at my oxygen. Um, and the order here doesn't matter too much. Um, sometimes the order can make it a lot easier or harder to solve the problem. Typically, I always start with my heaviest um, atom. I also like to start with the simplest. Um, and sometimes, I think in our next problem, this will be a bit more obvious. But this means that it's in only, the element is in only one product and one reactant. So here, um, all of my elements are just in one product and one reactant. Um, so I'll start with either the potassium or the chlorine. The potassium is a little bit heavier, although you could do either one. And looking at this, I have one potassium atom on my reactant side and one on my product side. So actually, those are balanced. If I look at my chlorine, it's the same thing. I've got one chlorine on my reactant side and one chlorine on my product side. So those are balanced. So this is seemingly very easy until I come to the oxygen. I have three oxygen in my reactants and only two in my products. So I need to use coefficients on either side of the arrow to bring this to the same number of oxygen on each side. Now, um, two and three, um, what I'm going to look for is basically like a least common denominator. I'm actually going to multiply three and two together to kind of think of what is something that would actually 
work for both, and that's six. So if I multiply this O2 by three, a coefficient of three, I would have a total of six oxygen atoms. And if I multiply my KClO2, I would have two times three. So it's the coefficient times the subscript. That would equal six oxygen atoms. So now the oxygens are balanced. I have six on both sides. But by adding that coefficient of two in my reactant side, I have prevented my chlorine and my potassium from being balanced. So I need to come and look at my coefficient on the product side in front of the potassium and chlorine to um, further solve this. So now I have this two coefficient distributes out to everything in the chemical formula. That's why it was two times the subscript of three. If I had three oxygen atoms in this molecule and I had two molecules, I'd have a total of six oxygen atoms. I have one potassium in this molecule and two molecules, so I have a total of two potassium atoms. And I have two chlorine atoms for the same reason. On my product side, I have one of each, but I have a molecule that is potassium chloride. If I put a coefficient of two in front of it, I'll have two potassium and two chlorine. And so this will be my balanced equation. Two um, ClO3 forming two potassium chloride and three oxygen. And I can look and see that there's nothing I can divide all of my coefficients by to create a smaller whole number. This is as, as small as it will get. And that's a balanced equation. All right, let's try this again for this next one. Um, so in this case, we have a situation where we have uh, oxygen in just one reactant, but it is in every single one of my products. That's uh, complicated relative to it being just in one product in one reactant. So I'm gonna do my oxygen last. For my chlorine, hydrogen, and sulfur that's left over, I, I can really start with e any of these that I want. Um, I'll just start with sulfur. Um, so if I look at this, I have one sulfur on my reactant side. Sorry, it's one. And if I look here, I've got one sulfur on my product side. So my sulfur is actually already balanced. Now let's look at carbon. I have three carbon on my reactant side, and I have one carbon on my product side. So I do not have a balance. If I multiply my product by three, then I'll have three times one, three carbon on my product side, and that will balance with my three carbons on my reactant side. Now let's look at hydrogen. I have eight hydrogen on my reactant side, and I have two hydrogen on my product side. So to balance these out, if I multiply two by four, I'll have eight. So I'll put a coefficient of four in front of my water molecule. So I have eight hydrogen on my reactant side and eight hydrogen on my product side. Now I have carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur balanced. Now it's time to look at the oxygen. So I have oxygen in each of my um, product molecules, but it's isolated in my reactants. And that's helpful. It means that I can use this to balance out the, on the reactant side to balance out the oxygen on the product side without impacting the carbon, hydrogen, or sulfur in my reactants, which would cause me to have to go back and forth between reactants and products to try and balance and would probably never be resolved. So I'm going to try to get a count for the number of oxygen atoms that I have in my products. So from my CO2, I have three molecules of carbon dioxide, and each one has two oxygen atoms, so that's six oxygen atoms. I have um, four water molecules, and each one has one oxygen atom, so that's four oxygen. And in my sulfur dioxide molecule, I have one sulfur dioxide molecule. Each has two oxygen atoms, so I have two oxygen atoms there. And if I take the sum, if I add these all up, I'm going to get a total of 12 oxygen atoms. 
be careful to include your coefficient as well as the subscript um, when you're multiplying these out. So on my reactant side, I only have two oxygen. So I need a total of 12. Well, two times what equals 12? That would be six. So I have six oxygen molecules I need. And now I have a balanced equation. It would be um, C3H8S plus six oxygen is going to form three carbon dioxide plus four water molecules plus one sulfur dioxide. And for this sulfur dioxide and this C3H8S, I can choose to put a one in front of them or I can omit it um, since it's redundant. If I'm writing it in the equation, it means it's there no matter what. So we typically omit the one coefficient and just assume that it is there.